You know, as Sir Winston Churchill said, it's courage that counts. And I remember seeing uh, black and white still photos and newsreels of right after the Nazis would blitz London, bomb neighborhoods, that the prime minister would put on his bowler hat I don't know if it was a cape or if it was a coat that he just draped over his shoulders and his big cigar, he would stomp on the top of that rubble with his, I guess, workers, co-workers, colleagues. The next day, he would go out there. He did this routinely. It was like uh, an expression of courage. I refuse to cower in fear. We got to get up the next day, no matter what, and face the day. And uh, it, was, it was inspirational. It was inspirational to see the leader of the country standing uh, firm in the midst of the devastation. Uh, it's important what we do um, in, in the high times and in the hard times. Uh, in the high times, we mustn't get apathetic and lethargic and uh, have comfort be our main fixation because we got to fight through that because that's numbing. And then in hard times, we must not cower, wince, or yield to discouragement. And I'll tell you what discouragement is. Discouragement is the elimination or the, the removal of courage. And courage is bravery. Courage is a willingness to face off with something and really address it and deal with it and, and uh, make no excuses, but really have the, the wherewithal to address it. That's why the imagery of Churchill standing in the streets, and you could see the townspeople so appreciated it. It gave them a morale boost. There's our leader. He's not shrinking back. Um, years ago, uh, Mel Gibson played the part of a Scottish leader in a movie called Braveheart. I think his name was Wallace. And um, I actually talked to the guy that directed and produced the film. And uh, it's a pretty famous story amongst men's groups because they, uh, they killed this man's wife thinking it would destroy him, destroy his morale. And they did have a deep love, and it was a loss. They had a great romance, as was depicted in the film. So as a viewer, you really felt it was so evil what they did. And But it backfired on him, and it put gasoline on the fire of this Wallace, and he, he, he pressed through that heartache courageously. And, and that's why... Uh, so many men reference that movie as an inspiration for being courageous. It's, it's, it appeals to us men. And, and I'm married to a woman that's very courageous. So this, this is not just a gender-specific thing. In fact, all of us men and women are required to walk by faith. And faith is, I think, synonymous with courage. And I think faith is the opposite of being discouraged. And I think discouragement is where you entertain and cherish these thoughts. And I, the times I've experienced, I start it, it get, get tempted with justifiable self-pity, poor me, and it just weakens you. Maybe it, I'm ashamed to admit it, you know, and, I, and it's something that you have to identify so you can stay away from it and just say, you know what? It could have been a lot worse. I forgive everybody, including myself, and I'm pressing on. Get back away from me, devil. I am moving forward. I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You can do that. You know, the, the Calvinists uh, believe in uh, the perseverance of the saints as exclusively a grace from God. Everything, you know, is, is from God. And, and no doubt, perseverance is a grace and it's a gift from God. My view, though, is that it it is something God is looking for us to step up into by faith. And uh, 
you know, God provides that, but he also wants us to receive it. I think Caleb exemplifies this in uh, Numbers chapter 14. As the description goes, Caleb had a different spirit in him, for he sought the Lord his God fully. Boy, that appeals to me. It's like, uh, that's better than Wallace on the Braveheart movie. It's like, whereas that was sort of a geopolitical cause and, you know, Caleb, Joshua and Caleb had a mission from God to press through all the junk of unbelief, discouragement. In fact, four times in Joshua chapter one, God told Joshua and Caleb to only be strong and very courageous. 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 And um, I remember one time I was at a church and a guy said, be encouraged. And I was waiting for him to encourage me with something specific. But then I thought then and still now, I get it. Just take the posture of courage. That's what Winston Churchill did after the bombing. The next day, he stepped up and said, I'm going to face off with this. I'll close with a personal story. I was spearfishing in the cold waters of New Zealand, 80 miles off the north tip and a set of islands called Three Kings. We got out of the boat. There were three of us. And we had spears. So, you know, you buddy system, but with spears, you got to also have distance. It's counterintuitive. You know, on one hand, the buddy system, you're really accountable with each other. But with spears, because you have weapons, you have to go the opposite. So they went this way, and I went this way. Long story short, I got sucked into a current that pulled me away from the boat and the two divers behind these boulders into obscurity and then out into the open sea. As hard as I paddled with my one arm and my spear, I could not reach the rocks. And I just was, it was a sinking feeling, a terrible feeling. I had a buoyancy because of a wetsuit. I had a mask, I had a snorkel, no tank. It's free diving and just drifting out into the sea. And um, I prayed and the Lord heard me. And the guys on the boat, after they looked all around the rocks and all around where I was, they thought I drowned. But this guy in the boat that owned the boat said, men, we've got to pray. And he prayed and he aimed the boat into a crazy idea. Everybody, the, the chef on the boat said, I thought it was nuts what he was doing. He aimed the boat straight out into the open sea, pulled it up, opened the throttle, went out about a mile and a half straight out into the ink black sea and rode right up on me and found me. And that encouraged my faith. And it reminded me of other, when I was overwhelmed with that loss, I thought this reminds me of this other problem I had where I was drowning in fear. I wasn't in water, but it was a turbulence that created all kinds of anxiety. Whatever you're facing, you may be, men, women, you may be hormonal right now. We men have hormones like women, it's different. And we men need to understand the differences so we could be understanding in our relationships. But we have fluctuations with those kinds of things. They affect our thinking. The tempter will try to come and wear you down right before a victory. So you got to fight. You got to understand and not be ignorant, ignorant of the devil's devices. The devil tried to take me out at that point. God brought me back and gave me a second chance. And I'm living like I'm alive from the dead. And and I want to encourage you, since you're alive, you're alive from the dead. (laughs) Live the rest of your life taking the courage that the Holy Spirit gives in Jesus' name. Amen.